Good morning. Good morning. Hello. So is this the correct meeting time? I wasn't 100% sure because I think I was keep talking about changing it. I haven't heard of any changes. I was also surprised that more people haven't joined yet. Cool, well, sounds like we're on the same page. I'm guessing the bigger reason people haven't joined yet is just because we're still working through getting the document sorted out, which speak of Michael right there. And so I'm not sure how much we have to discuss today. Um, I have specific topics in the doc that I just want to uh, chat through um, and make sure, you know, because I think there's like, at this point, I, I went through, you know, um, I cut down the paper from like 52 pages down to uh, like 36 um, pages. And we probably still want to cut out a little bit more. There's some other stuff in there around the, um, I, I, there's some areas where I, I just sort of deleted the whole section, but I wanted to double check with folks before deleting the whole section. I'm like, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it a couple more minutes for, for other folks to join. And then I think um, want to just kind of go through, get some second and third opinions. And if, you know, by the end of this meeting, um, you know, we're all more or less in agreement, then uh, you know, we can cut all that sort of stuff out and then just kind of hand it over once again, just to one final, like, look it over. Is there any big things that could be completely broken? If not, you know, I think it's, it's good to sort of be released. I think the main things right now are, I'll give it a couple minutes before, you know, I just want to make sure, um, I give it a few minutes. <sighs> and Michael, while we're waiting, one of the discussions was whether we had moved the time for this meeting yet or not. And oh, so the last we haven't, but. Yeah. No, we haven't. So, so the last time it seemed like this, a very minor plurality or whatever of, of folks seem to prefer this time. Um, with that said, I am going to do a reevaluation of uh, just the, the doodle, just to go through. And um, I want to take into account, first and foremost, the folks who have contributed to the group, contributed to the paper, contributed to a bunch of this stuff. Um, in, when thinking uh, in changing the time, because I don't want it to have been like, hey, yeah, there's a bunch of other folks who want to, uh, who would prefer another time, but like to some extent, hey, I do want to provide some deference to the folks who have contributed a ton. Like, for example, like Andres, right? He, he helped lead this thing. He can't make this time anymore. It would be a big shame to just be like, hey, Andres, I know you still want to contribute. You contributed a ton, but you know, I know you have a, a personal engagement at, at this time every time, you know, um, Sorry, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna accommodate you. I would much rather say, hey, look, you've you've done a, you know, you contributed a ton here. Maybe it's worth just saying, yep, you know, let's uh, let's uh, uh, you know, accommodate you, especially that since that there are, do, does seem to be a good deal of folks who do want to accommodate it. Um, what I will say also is that uh, I might not be able to start making this time as well uh, as uh, it sounds like the the CD foundations. Um, End user council uh, is now at this time. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it seems it, it seems like with so many working groups, uh, the the entire day is now working groups all the time. Uh, so there, inevitably there'll be some overlap. But yeah, um, yeah. I think we, in the middle of the day for me, so it means that my morning is preparing for the meetings. Yeah, <laughs> meeting, meeting, meeting all through lunch, and then after lunch it's recovery and might get an hour of work done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, we can we can get started here. Uh, so just as a reminder here, um, you know, this is uh, this meeting falls under the CNCF. So uh, your participation um, uh, must follow the uh, CNCF's uh, code of conduct. Code of conduct. Also, this meeting is recorded, and at some point after this meeting, um, you know, usually 
hopefully within a few days, uh, this meeting will be uploaded to, to YouTube for others to kind of uh, watch. All right. First, um, because I'm going to have a bunch of stuff to talk about, uh, I'll just throw it over to, uh, we'll go down the list uh, on folks on my, my Zoom here um, for updates. Uh, Alex, do you have any sort of updates? I know I saw a couple of comments from you. I think I addressed most of them. Yeah. What? One second. Um, uh, is it just me or yeah. is this no, my audio? Out? Oh, okay. Alex, yeah, your audio is coming in weird. Maybe you're on the wrong mic or something. And now we can't hear anything. Oh, oh, yeah, better. Maybe. That better? Yeah, 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 yeah. much better. Okay, sorry. I don't know what that was about, but uh, <laughs> it's hard it off and on again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I did a pass through prior to last, was it last week or two weeks ago's meeting? I don't know. I did, I did a pass through and made a bunch of comments, and I think we've addressed a lot of those. Um, I haven't had a chance to do a second um, read through. Um, but I will, I know that there is an objective to really cut down the page count. Um, and I think some of that work has already happened and I'll do a read through thinking about that too. Um, and what, whether there's redundant material we can take out or ways that we can reorganize a little bit of it to condense. Um, so I'll do, I will do a pass through of that, but I haven't yet. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually probably do that pass through right after the updates from everybody. Great. Um, Next up on my list, uh, Brendan. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as Alex. I know that I want to spend some time, go through the document and really take a good read and see what, how I can help you clean some of that stuff out of there, but just haven't had the time yet. So All right. later on today, sounds like a good option. Cool. Uh, Aditya? I was, a, I was able to make, you know, go through about like the first half of the document, but and I, well, one of the things I really wanted to help with was uh, deduplication with the earlier white paper, but yeah, so I, th I think it'd be great to be able to get some of that done during this call up the updates because finding time for it during the week's been tough. Cool. Uh, Marina? Yeah, kind of a little bit similar to everybody else. I've been kind of starting to look at the document but haven't finished my past. There's probably no, no like particular comments because I know that duplication is one of the big things and it's hard to do that till I've read the whole thing, so. But yeah, mostly looks good overall though, so. Cool, cool. Uh, so I saw Hector join. So Hector, we just got going through some quick updates before we kind of go through section by section. Um, yeah, so Hector, do you have any uh, uh, updates? No. Uh, all right. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I know I saw some of your, your uh, I know you had a couple of comments in there. I think I addressed most of the comments. Uh, okay, so um, I, you know, <laughs> it has been uh, one of my primary goals to make sure that this sort of thing goes through and that we can sort of clean it up. So a couple of big things from my end, um, I deleted the prototype implementation thing uh, completely from the document outside of just saying, hey, here's where to go. Um, it was actually uh, somewhat announced today that you know we've uh, that uh, you know we're we're going to be donating that to the Open SSF. Um, there should be a bigger sort of announcement that that's going on with that later on. Uh, you should see see that go out probably next week. But uh, uh, the basic idea here, right, is is so like, hey, there's a bunch of details in there. They're mostly implementation details. Doesn't necessarily make sense remove them, we can refer people to that. And that can be sort of also the living code and living document. So, you know, if folks are interested in, hey, here's what literally this, you know, what something that's based on this document looks like, you can go here, you can look at the document on how it's implemented, why it was implemented and so on over there. Um, let me share uh, my thing here and we can kind of go through um, section by section. Uh, so I so I cut that out, that took out about seven pages. Um, so just as a reminder here, uh, I, I cut out a bunch of stuff. So it took it down from 52-ish um, pages down to like 36-ish pages. Uh, a lot of the stuff here that, a lot of other stuff here is this page count is also not exactly correct because there's a lot of sections that if you notice, um, you know, I might've cut out a paragraph here, but it's like, well, this thing was already pushed on the next 
line anyway. So uh, there's some, there's, you know, there's some areas here that I sort of cut out a couple of sentences, but, you know, like for example, the architecture prototype here, right? Like there's a whole bunch of white space um, because, you know, this section, be, because of the way that we set up the sections, it automatically sort of puts it on another page. I'm just sort of saying, hey, that's fine for now. We'll, you know, when, when um, we actually format the paper, we can sort some of that sort of stuff out. Um, so I went through the various sections, deleted a bunch of stuff, uh, deleted, did, did a bunch of deduplication, referred people a lot of times to, hey, if you want to know more about how you should be signing, what the encryption model, et cetera, look at the best practices paper um, or referring to other cloud native uh, security papers. So on that front, um, as one thing, uh, and I'll just add this as notes here, and I will just, um, and I already kind of cleaned a lot of that up. So I'll just approve my own comment there. Um, let me go and, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, so stuff. Add slash change citations as needed. So we need to add and change citations as needed. So like uh, these are, you know, most of the stuff is is the 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 best practices white paper. We might want to just say where details are lacking. Please look at this as opposed to citing it in every single location because almost every section is like, please see the you know so, you know please see the security uh, the the supply chain security best practices on how you should be storing your artifacts on how you should be, uh, you know, run it, you know, how you should be securing your, your actual build step itself, how you should be securing your build script, you know, and, and I don't want to necessarily repeat it everywhere, but it might make sense in a couple of sections to sort of repeat that. Um, so that's one thing that we need to just sort of go through um, and figure out. Uh, the other things are we might want to clean up the intro a little bit just to make sure certain things are a little clearer. I don't know. Um, I think largely the thing that I, um, based on conversations and based on the conversations with Alex and previous conversations in the past few weeks, the primary goal of the reference architecture here is to highlight the gap in knowledge around provenance. Right, so a lot of other papers, best practices, guides talk about how to do security scans, how to you know secure your code, how to deal with bad actors in general. There's a lot of documentation out there that already handles that. There's not a lot of documentation out there that says, hey, when running a build, you should be tracing provenance while doing all the other stuff, right? Doing the scans and you know, yeah, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. There's, there's not a lot of documentation out there on tracing your build in, in ways that you can uh, have a, a, you can trust the integrity of it and so on. Um, so that's the highlight of this paper. And so that's why almost every section, you know, see, and I think going through it, by and large, every section really, I think, hammers that home now. It hammers, you know, it, it, it highlights the fact that um, it, it higher, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it, it highlights the fact that, um, like, for example, you know, when you're pulling from artifact repositories, you need to make sure you know where you're pulling from, uh, when you are running builds, right. You want to make sure that step a led to step B, you know, and all of these things combined. And here's how we're approaching that problem. Here's how we're approaching, you know, identity and signing. Oh, you want specifics on how to sign? No, that go to the best practices, other best practices paper and, and you know, so on and so forth. But you want to understand why it's important and how you need to make sure these things sort of interact with each other. Like, yes, there should be different identities for the thing that pulls down your code than the thing that actually ran your build long-term, right? You know, some of the stuff maybe, you know, short-term isn't there yet, yada, yada. So those are kind of the, the things that were kind of, um, uh, I, I kind of went through and did. So once again, um, let me do this intro cleanup. Probably needs to get done because there's some stuff in here that I think we just want to, we might want to just highlight one or two more times. Like, yep, defense in depth, signing and verification, artifact metadata analysis uh, and automation. And that leads to why provenance is super important. We have some stuff highlighted here that are just sort of gen general, like high level things and, you know, um, 
and whatnot. Uh, you know, hey, here's some high I think level. I think honestly, we can get rid of all of that stuff. Okay, yeah. So that I'm I'm totally cool with with getting rid of uh, most of that as well. I think the problem scope is where I feel like this is really important, right? The thing here that we're trying to talk about is hey, we need to do provenance verification, we need to do trustworthiness, and then for dependencies, we essentially are saying, you need to do that recursively as much as possible, right? And then what we're trying to say here is, you know, um, we just want to make clear is that trustworthiness, which is like the scans and everything else, that's highlighted in a million other documents, right? You know, there's a million documents that say you should be doing SAS scans and DAS scans and source code linting and all that sort of good stuff. But there's really not many documents that are saying, you should be tracing your build. You should be making sure that you're recording every time you pull from Git and you're, you know, there's not a lot of that. Um, and so we want to make sure that that gets highlighted. And I kind of uh, added some additional stuff here just to kind of really highlight that, which is, you know, it helps us identify, you know, the matrix, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, trustworthiness is already covered by other security practices like artifact scans and code reviews and should be part of your software security picture. C, you know, other best practices documents. This can be cleaned up. You know, a lot of this, I, I think I was doing quite late at night. So if there's like, I'm okay with sort of rewording some of this sort of stuff, but I just want to kind of wanted to hit the high level things as much as is possible. Um, finally, so one of the things here is the artifact architecture prototype. So this is the secure software factory, which is this repository over here. Um, that code is under, you know, significant development. So I want to also remove a lot of stuff in there because a lot of that stuff is completely out of date anyway from the paper. Um, because we've, you know, like a lot of the stuff around spiffy spire integration is essentially done at this point. A lot of stuff around things that were missing from admission controllers, you know, uh, the, the team here at, at, at City has worked with the open source to kind of get some of those features built into tools like Keyverno and Gaper and so on. Um, and so here we're just kind of saying this used to be six or seven pages of like how that thing was built. And now we're saying, just go over here if you want to understand more about how that's built or you just want to see that sort of thing. Um, then finally, you know, we not finally, uh, the next section, the secure software factory, right? So um, I didn't do a whole lot of cleanup here. Uh, I did do some cleanup here on, on the, the component sections, just trying to kind of, there was a couple of areas where we talked a lot about like how you should be securing Kubernetes. And here we're just saying you should be following the Kubernetes, you know, hardening guide if possible. And this is where, once again, from my comment, uh, like, I don't know exactly what hardening guides and best practices guides on that end we want to highlight, but we should probably cite that uh, if possible. Or at the, you know, and this is where I'm also still open, is if at the top, we just want to say, Hey, uh, we are we are not getting into the details in a lot of areas on like how to secure certain things, like how to secure your Kubernetes and blah blah blah. Please refer to these guides for that, um, and we're not going to talk about it again. You know that might be something we want to um, do, but but once again, that's you know whatever. Uh, so a lot of the other stuff, I you know I cleaned up a couple of things here and there. Um, making sure that unless it's super specific to the provenance piece, right? Like I think, you know, reproducible and hermetic builds, like, hey, by doing it this way, it makes it easier to sort of say, I trust what actually happened here. And I trust the integrity of what that happened there, um, I think is, is important. But beyond some of those other things, I think we can kind of, um, uh, you know, mostly just refer people to the other documents. So like, for example, policy management framework here, right? We're, we're trying to say, um, you know, uh, more or less just trying to say, hey, look, you know, this is the high level reason why we need it. And if you want to understand more about how cloud native policy management works, follow this document. Um, what else? So most of the other stuff, simple, simple, simple. Then um, the thing here, when talking about admission controller, I want um, this is the, this is the one section that I do want a second or third or fourth set of eyes on. Um, so as I, I mentioned in the comment, want to get a second opinion here, but most of the content here, I think is described a bit clearer, the SSF functionality section and want to make sure we don't duplicate ourselves. I do think there's a lot of good content here. Some of which is subtle, 
So do you want to make sure it's captured somewhere? Like, I do think that there's information here that I want to make sure it's captured, but there's certain things in here that feel a little like we're diving really deep into details. Like, you know, when, you know, like, I think this is important, but we might want to just state it a different way such that it's just more straightforward and simpler. Like, hey, the emission controller uses a network jail to enforce an, you know, admit nothing policy. Like maybe we just say, if you're following best practices, you know, we are, you know, it's deny by default, then allow by default, you know, if possible, like maybe just kind of leave it more broad um, and then just highlight specific things. But I want to get another set of eyes here is just that there's a lot of content here and it kind of goes between different levels. Like we're talking about emission controllers at a generic level. And then we're talking very, very, very specifically on certain things. And so we might just want to reorganize it a little bit where the specifics go into the, the next section. And this is focused purely on the high level reason maybe. Um, but that's the main section. I think I wanted a second set of eyes on um, another thing, which I'm maybe after rereading and re reorganizing this comment might be uh, a little, like I already kind of removed a bunch of stuff from here. So this might no longer be valuable, but I still want to get another uh, set of folks to just kind of uh, read through uh, some of this, which is just, hey, can we just make sure, for example, that we're not going too deep in the weeds with some of the stuff? Because I know that in the source code section, we did originally have some stuff talking about, um, you know, making sure, you know, people can't force push and certain other things. And it's like, you know what, <laughs> put that, you know, a lot of that sort of stuff is, is cited in the software, is stated in the best practices paper, right? And general sort of, you know, follow general sorts of uh, best practices for source code control. We're not going to get into every detail on, on what you should be doing here. Um, so that's uh, some of that. I cleaned up some of these other things uh, regarding sort of where I feel like user credentials and cryptographic material kind of were taught, saying the same thing in different ways where we're trying, you know, and to be clear, I think they were, they are very different, but I think the way that they were worded was maybe a little confusing. So I, I did clear a little bit of that up while also saying, follow, you know, the, the best practices paper again. Um, the cryptographic material one is something that actually, um, this is where I, this is definitely not my area of expertise. So uh, want eyes on cleaning this section up. I do want, uh, other folks to kind of read through this section, but I do think um, given the nature of how identities and what, and, and a lot of this stuff is all set up in order to do it the right way in a secure so software factory model, you do need, we, we might need to get into those details, but once again, I want to defer to others to kind of provide some of that. Um, yeah. Then uh, most of the other stuff seemed, I, I cleaned up a little bit, but seemed okay. Um, public signing keys. This is where I, I, you know, I'm not sure how we want to state this. Does, are we sort of restating what we have up here in the cryptographic material stuff? And we just maybe want to have a sentence or two. I don't know. Um, uh, rest of the stuff there. Okay. So now secure software functionality. I think a lot of the details can go in this section, right? Because this is where it's like, Hey, when you actually are doing the various actions, this is how they all interact with each other in order to achieve the goal of the secure software factory, which is like tracing provenance and being able to kind of provide a level of security around that provenance. Um, uh, da, da, da. And then I also create, just added two sentences uh, based on Celeste uh, uh, feedback, which is like, hey, uh, probably should have, um, what are you talking about in the functionality? And it's like, hey, this is what the actions that are taken during normal operation, but uh, need second set of eyes on this. I'll just put that. Um, most of the other stuff in here, I couldn't really think of much we might want to sort of remove from here because this is where it does really talk about specific things. Um, I added a couple of comments. Uh, like, for example, we use... As far as I can tell, we only really use hermetic here. Whereas other places we're talking about network jail and we're talking about reproducible. Do we want to maybe clarify a little bit 
But once again, that maybe is stuff that we can wait till after we release this document for broader community feedback. Um, I don't think it's 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 super important um, per se. Uh, then finally, there's some other stuff in here. Um, we don't we didn't really have a lot in the future work section. Do we just want to delete it? Um, I'm sort of leaning towards yes, that like there's enough stuff just now going on in the community. Um, like outside of maybe a sentence or two, or just to say, hey, look, we expect this, you know, thing to evolve. Here are some groups like the CNCF, the Open SSF, maybe some other open groups just to keep be aware of. <clears throat> uh, but beyond that, it just seemed like there wasn't really anything going on in that section. Uh, the other thing is, from what Celeste had mentioned, which I, I agree with, is there's a lot of good like meet on like specific details created quite succinctly. It feels like this should be maybe in a different section. I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, and then finally, uh, there was a section here that was essentially just this sort of table, I think duplicated. I think it was like a earlier revision of that table. So I deleted that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. And then here, uh, I, I don't know if we wanted to just delete this image. I'm not sure where it was supposed to live. I just see that it's, it's um, it, to be clear, it's a good image. I just don't know, like based on now how the document is sort of um, structured, we don't really even talk about in Toto too much. We don't even talk about the individual tools really at all. We're talking about them more generically. So I don't know if we wanna kind of include that document still. Um, and then finally, there was this section, which still seems pretty good as in the appendix as like, hey, here are things um, like from a, like a, almost like a controls perspective. So I know I, I talked through a whole bunch of stuff, but just wanted to just go through all the stuff over the past few days, I kind of went through um, and, and kind of cleaned up there. And once again, as a reminder, this is mostly to kind of read through Celeste's feedback. You know, she was like, hey, you, you're at 50 pages. It probably over 50 pages, it probably makes sense to be no more than you know, about 25 pages here. Um, I think we cleaned up a lot of content that we actually are closer to 25 pages than we think we are. It's just that the way that the the you know the the page um, the section breaks are set up. There's a lot of content in here that like you know there would used to be uh, I think a few more paragraphs here. We deleted some of those. I think you know, but still want to do some additional cleanup on on that front um, while still be providing uh, the value we need. Okay, I know I talked a lot. Um, additional thoughts, questions, concerns, um, anything that folks think I deleted that should not have been deleted or things that folks think like, yeah, yeah, we, you know, we can take a, a closer look at. I can go through a couple of those sections that you said you wanted a second look at and just like, you know, read them more in detail that I can you know, during this and I can do it in the next couple of days. So happy to, happy to do that. Yeah, I will have, a, have another look and also as well focus on the mission controller if you need another pair of eyes there. Yeah, good. Cool. Yeah. And, and just as a, um, a reminder, we are trying to kind of finish it up as much as possible, like other than like, hey, a sentence here, a sentence there by end of today. Um, and I know a lot of people might be busy, but uh, just want to want to make sure that that we can get that second set of eyes on, on some of these things. And if, you know, uh, I'm going to once again, do another pass again today on some of this. Um, I think we might even, you know, once again, as, as sort of Andres mentioned last week, you know, Celeste's feedback is just one uh, piece of feedback. So uh, what she was saying in there, like some of it, maybe we want to take with a grain of salt. Some of it maybe was, you know, it is useful. Um, so if, if we do think like, you know what? Yeah, we trimmed, you know, because we've already trimmed about, you know, 16 or 17 pages of this thing. You think, oh, you know, we and, and 16 or 17 actual pages and then maybe another two or three pages of actual content. They're just in the section breaks. Um, and we think like, hey, we're at a good spot or we only think another couple of pages could be cut out. I think I'm also okay with that having reread it because I think my rereading of, of it 
um, it comes off significantly more over the past like week or so becomes it has become significantly more readable. It's clearer what we're trying to state. It's clear that the focus here is provenance. And then at the high level, here is the general tools we have and how they relate to establishing and, and tracing that provenance. And then in the, the final section under the secure software factory uh, components, but not the components, sorry, the, um, the actions. So under the stages and the actions, here's how those, here's how we take those components, the inputs and the outputs and tie them all together to do the right things to trace provenance. That's, um, I think it's, it's, it's significantly in a, in a much better place with the help of us and everybody else here in the group um, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, so Ava has a question. Um, uh, paper, are you drawing a distinction between encryption signing and identity tr trustworthiness? So uh, one, yes, yeah, so one distinction we're making. So regarding encryption signing and identity, that's where I do want folks to go through and do a little bit of a second pass just to make sure um, that that that's clear. And to be clear, that's where you know that I'm not an expert on that end, so I'm gonna defer to others for that. But as far as trustworthiness, the areas that we're trying to sort of um, following a couple of the definition of trustworthiness, the idea here is we're using trustworthiness as like, if you look at some of the NIST definitions and, and similar, it's, it's around, hey, is this thing fit for a purpose? Is this thing doing what we expect it to do? And that kind of uh, definition. So on that, that trustworthiness, idea, the, the idea here is it's like a combination of all those things, right? We can validate trustworthiness through a bunch of different things, but here we're trying to kind of be clear that the sorts of trustworthiness elements that we are not focused on is we're not focused on stuff that is covered in depth in other areas. So this is stuff like SAS and DAS scans and source code scans and all that sort of stuff. We're trying to say, hey, there's a bunch of papers for those sorts of things. And you can follow the various best practices documents, and we'll cite a couple of those. But we're not going to get into the details that, like, when building out a secure software factory, you should make sure you have a SAS scan and a DAS scan. And this, we're trying to say, hey, our focus is around provenance and integrity and tying all those pieces together. Um, Ava, does that answer your question? I think so. Um, if you could point me to where in the document it does touch on identity. Um, I'd love to just give that a scan for you. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple of areas. So the the areas uh, in particular, I think that are important. Uh, let me go back through. Uh, remember, uh, so it's much. Fun. Yeah, I gave it a skim about a week and a half ago and didn't see identity in there, but so I think it's kind of, um, and to be clear, some of these sections yeah, you might want exactly. to rename, but like, for example, user credentials and cryptographic material is some areas where, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, to be clear, I, I'm not saying that they're the same thing, but there's, there is some overlap and we might want to sort of say, here's where that overlap is. Here's where they're distinct in this thing. And then there's also, there was a, there was something somewhere. It, I think it might be you under admission. Oh, public and, signing keys. Yeah. And then under the admission controller section too, we do talk a little bit about, I think, right. admitting that only things that were um, with the right identity, or I might have reworded that already. Uh, okay. da, da, da. Yeah. Um, the basic principles I'm looking for here is that trustworthiness should not be tied to um, knowing the identity. But rather yep. that that the identity is trustworthy via some proof, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's, I think, where we're trying to also, yeah, uh, draw the distinction a little bit. And maybe we could be a okay. bit clearer in the introduction that, you know, the source of it, trustworthiness we're talking about is around verification of stuff like provenance and, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, and trusting of that provenance. So as in like, did the did the right people run the right steps in the right order? That kind of thing. 
Yeah. Um, and then we're trying to sort of, we're, yeah. we're, and we're trying to make that distinct, or sorry, we're trying to say that what we aren't going to do is we're not going to talk about the trustworthiness of, let's say, your build steps, right? We're right, saying or of me as a person. That's the thing oh, that yeah, I'm, sure, I'm most yeah, concerned yeah, yeah. about. Um, oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, cool. no, 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 no. We're not we, trying well, to, uh, 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 yes, we're not, we're not trying to get into that. Great. So the, the other thing that was on the screen a minute ago was um, uh, talking about transmission of the, the root signing key. Um, and maybe it's in a different section, but I'm concerned that framing the pipeline as dependent on using a root CA does not account for pipelines that use individually owned material like PGP keys or SSH keys to sign content. Yep. How do you yep. square those two? Maybe I just you know glossed over and didn't see that. So that might be um, one of my. Uh, I might have inadvertently deleted like let's say something that clarified that. But I so I agree with you on that, and we just need to be clear that like, hey, you know, if you're using a root CA, make sure that you're you're, uh, you know, and if you're you're uh, doing another model, right? Uh, but either way, I think the thing that we're trying to also do is we're trying to also then point people to the best practices guides for the details on. Of course, just I want to remind well, yeah, yeah. you to be mindful not to um, exclude models that are in widespread use today and you know vetted by DoD and trusted uh, from from this, like people who have keys sign things. Sure, um, and right. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, free to, or... to add a comment or, or change it. Yeah. Right there, Michael. Um, yeah. And my point on that one, looking at it was just to make sure that we link whatever the trust store is that users may have, however they're trusting things, whether it's PGP, SSH, X509, however they're doing it, linking that to whatever key signed it. And so if there is a key chain that you would have with X509, just to specify, hey, you know, the root might be sent separately, but the key chain itself is going to need be needed in certain situations. Yep. And that might be X509 specific. That's a good point. Okay. Um, any other questions, thoughts? Uh, on that or or on any of the other sections that 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 feel like either maybe you know uh, need to need to still be go through with a fine tooth comb and, and rewrite or um, need to be cleaned up at all other than obviously what we've already sort of commented on. All right. So just, uh, you know, as a reminder, um, I'm planning on sending this out to the uh, CNCF for, for just sort of, once again, another sort of uh, uh, like, uh, you know, transforming it into sort of the actual document for, for broader release and then getting um, additional community feedback there. So if there's any sort of big things, make sure they get done in the, in the next uh, few hours, because I know we kind of talked about last week, like today's sort of the day we wanted to make sure everything was done at least for this thing, right? Obviously we're gonna go back after getting community feedback and so on and, you know, tweak uh, some things and make sure that, you know, uh, stuff is, is, is included that makes sense and, you know, stuff is taken out that, that doesn't make sense to, to have in here. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, otherwise, we can end it like 20 minutes early. Or if folks wanted to st stay on and say, hey, uh, let's talk through this section or something like that, I'm also uh, available to do that as well. I'm happy to call it 20 minutes early and then spend that time to look through the document. Sure. Sounds good.
All right. Uh, so we'll call it 20 minutes early and, and uh, you know, see you all uh, next week. And hopefully uh, next week we'll be talking about uh, new topics or, or uh, you know, we'll be getting feedback from uh, other folks. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.